Federal watchdogs may soon get unprecedented access to the Federal Reserve's books. Congressman Ron Paul and Alan Grayson are working together to get a piece of legislation through the Congress that would let the Government Accountability Office audit the Fed. The House Financial Services Committee has already approved the measure as an amendment to a larger financial reform bill. Joining me for more on this is former New York Governor Elliot Spitzer. Mr. Spitzer, great to have you with us tonight. Ed, great to be here once again. Thank you. This would be a can of worms opened up that we've never seen before in this country. How dangerous is this? Or should I say, how important is it? What do you think? I think it is critically necessary because the more we look at what the Fed did over the past year or two, and the AIG bailout is just merely one example of that, the more we have serious questions about what it has done with our money, what the structure is that it is rebuilding, a flawed structure of financial services, and therefore, necessarily, we should be asking questions, why, where did the money go, what was the rationale for what you did, and this bill merely gives Congress and the GAO the opportunity to ask questions. What could be more basic or more appropriate than that? Governor, what would be the first thing you would want to look for? If you, if you had access to the books, what would you look at? The first thing I would ask, and I would put Tim Geithner down, put him under oath, and Ben Bernanke and all the others, and say, explain why you gave AIG counterparties 100 cents on the dollar. Even after that superb IG report, the Inspector General report, we still don't know what Tim Geithner was thinking. He gave all this money to the major banks on Wall Street, did not ask them for anything back. Those are the sorts of questions, the guarantee of commercial paper, when and why, who was in what trouble, what did Goldman tell him about their financial position, contrary perhaps to all the claims they've been making in the, in the, in the the press. This could lead to substantial inquiries about fundamental wrongdoing. Tim Geithner has a lot of questions to answer. Ron Paul, congressman from Texas, has been introducing this since the 1980s. Right. Uh, he's been characterized as out there for a long time on this issue, but now this tidal wave that came in on Wall Street, he's got bipartisan support like we've never seen before. And deservedly so. Look, it Go ahead. Let me just, when, when I was doing my Wall Street cases years ago, people attacked me left, right, and center as well. So you need to understand, now that people are beginning to understand how fundamentally flawed some of the policies were in Washington and how fundamentally flawed Wall Street has been in terms of what it's done to our economy, suddenly some of these ideas don't seem so crazy. And they're rational. The Fed has been a black box which nobody could peer into. They claimed, don't politicize us. And let me tell you something, Alan Greenspan was one one of the most political people ever to run the Fed. He did what President Bush wanted him to do, raise taxes, lower taxes. Alan Greenspan always supported the White House. He was political. So let's get this out in the open, ask the hard questions, and have the conversation. That is what this discourse should be all about. And Mr. Bernanke is on record saying that it would hurt the independence of the Fed. Your thoughts on that? I think that that's just a red herring, silly argument. And Ben, come on, let's be honest about this. There are, of course, certain things, certain pieces of information about particular companies that should not be made public. But for you, as the chairman of the Fed, you need to explain what you're doing, how you're spending tax dollars, what you are asking of the companies whom you're giving billions of dollars. That is basic and fundamental to the transparency of the financial services system. And the notion that this would politicize it is simply silly.